Go ahead, John. I'm just curious, uh, what are some of the challenges um, coming into a program uh, so quickly and having to adjust and learn to uh, a new scheme, new players, playing off players? What are some of the things that you've had to do to, to get up to speed so quickly? Well, the most important thing was to learn the playbook, learn the terminology, and Coach Coons really helped me a lot with that, as well as Coach Adai and Coach Leslie. And I also had to give a lot of credit to Josh Chandler, who's on the field with me when I do need help. He helps me. But as of everything now, I understand everything and know uh, our defense. Go ahead, Cody. Uh, hey, Tony. I was just wondering if you could tell us um, what you think it's going to be like to play against um, Colin Schooling or Schooler? <laughs> yeah. Because um, Coach Dive told us you guys were kind of like best friends at Arizona. Yeah, that was my guy. That was my Mike linebacker at Arizona. So um, it's going to be pretty fun. I mean, anytime me and him faced off in practice at Arizona, it was always fun because we'll talk the most crap to each other. So, I mean, as soon as me and him see each other, it's up. <laughs> Okay, Don, you're next. Um, hey, Tony, I'm from the newspaper down here in Lubbock. I, just kind of following up on that, when did you, uh, when did you and Colin just realize that you would be uh, on opposite sidelines? Did have y'all kind of uh, uh, circled the date on your calendars uh, when you see each other again? Uh, for sure. I mean, it was it was for me for both of us. I know, I know it's the same for him because he's a competitor competitor as well. Um, he circled the day on the calendar because he can't wait to the day he can beat me. But it's not gonna happen. I can't wait to the day I can beat him. We always compete with each other, whether it was uh, football games and Madden or anything. So I can't wait. Go ahead, Kevin. So are you all communicating with each other this week or have you kind of called a halt to that till after the game? And uh, then after the game, uh, I'm sure you all will seek each other out. Uh, <laughs> it's totally about the game or, you know, we kind of try to catch up with other things. Very minimal communication. I mean, I might call him the night before the game or so just to pump his head up a little bit. But uh, I, don't, I won't do too much communicating with him this week. Go ahead, Greg. Tony, I was just wondering about your position background, even going back to like high school, middle school. You look real comfortable in pass coverage. So were you always been a linebacker? Did you play other positions? What, what's helped you with pass coverage? I played every position on defense except the defensive line. And on offense, I played every position on offense except quarterback and offensive line. So I've played the whole football field. So I feel like that – is what really helps me understand the game and understand what routes are coming to me and uh, pass coverage. Back to you, Don. Hey, Tony, last year when you guys played Texas Tech, uh, you had the uh, tackle on Alan Bowman. Uh, Alan went down, cracked his collarbone, wound up not playing the rest of the season. Now, last week he was demoted to second string, so he won't be the starting quarterback on Saturday. But... Uh, in the aftermath of that, uh, in the aftermath of that play, did you have any communication with Texas Tech or with Allen, or would you have any? Would you feel any reason to seek him out on Saturday to uh, say, "Hey, no hard feelings" or anything like that? No, for sure. You never want to see anybody get hurt uh, playing this game. I mean, it's a very dangerous game, and uh, throughout the football season, it's a lot of injuries, a lot of bumps and bruises uh, people go go through, and uh, seeing him go through that injury, which was a season injury, was very sad. I mean, I would I wouldn't want to end my season on an injury. So, I mean, seeing anybody else go through it, you always cringe as another football player. Back to you, Greg. Tony, you've talked a little bit about this in the past, but moving from Will linebacker at Arizona to, to Mike at West Virginia, um, again, how difficult is that move? What's Mike like, and? Is the mic different at WVU and what their this defense is doing compared to, you know, a three four or four a tr traditional four three something like that? 
Um, it's not really so much different uh, playing Mike than Will. It's just a little bit more high-low game rather than a uh, quick game uh, at Will linebacker. So it's just getting used to, like I said, the uh, pass, the route concepts that come from the field side rather than the boundary side. That's really about it. Keep going, Don. Uh, Tony, can uh, I believe you went into the, into the transfer portal before Colin did. Uh, what was your recruitment like uh, this past spring and summer? Um, and how did you wind up picking WVU? Um, my recruitment was pretty pretty wild. I mean, I'll be honest, but uh, when I got the uh, WVU offer from the beginning, um, they were the school that caught my eye and I really wanted to go to from the beginning because I had prior relationships, like I've said before, with people here and I felt the most comfortable and it just was an easy transition for me. Any final questions for Tony? Go ahead, Greg. Oops, there we go. Tony, you talked a little bit about this before as well. The, you know, the difference between Arizona, Las Vegas and West Virginia. Have you gotten time to actually get out and enjoy mountains, woods, any of that type of thing? Not necessarily. I mean, from what I see when I drive around, I see some stuff, but as far as the weather, when I get out of practice, it's, it's raining sometimes or it's too cold sometimes, so I'd rather sit in the house. But as soon as I get a day where I can come in during the day and go explore everything and it's not too dark, I, I can't wait. 